Here we have a simple scene with a grid, camera and material library. This material library has uh, just one material that is assigned to a grid. And that material has material output, some properties, constant material, melanin node that we will uh, look how to construct. SD as attributes from the coordinate system that is separate into S and T outputs and mapped into the redness and melanin is melanin amount and redness is melanin redness if we render that we will get the melanin color chart and this chart represents our V and E melanin we know that the E melanin is more red and it's on our left V melanin is on the right and there is a mix between them redness I remove that so this is now amount of only V melanin and if I start moving to the other side we can see the E melanin coming from bottom to the top let's go inside and see See how that looks using this paper we will take the v and e values and those values are in srgb scanned using d65 illuminant so we will need to do some color conversion from d65 to scene linear to get the correct values but the process for that because these values are absorption values i will show you so if I connect output, our color output, this would be our V-melanin absorption values, and this would be E-melanin absorption values. Then here we have a, a simple mix node where we are mixing those two, and you can see the gradient from left to right. This is the subnet input for melanin redness. We have some multiplier correcting this gradient in a way that we can get enough range from zero to one for melanin. I will show you that later, but now that just looks super bright. And and then here we have a melanin amount that is also a multiplier that goes from 0 to 1. Right now that doesn't do anything except creating our gradient. And here is the important part where we are taking uh, absorption value, multiplying to minus 1 to invert that. That will not show us anything here because it goes into the minus. And then we are using exponent to convert that absorption uh, values into the color one and then after that because these values are in srgb d65 now what we want we want to convert them into the scene linear scene linear here is what we decided to be our working color space in houdini 20 we have this ocio settings where we can actually pick up render working color space and we will work on this project in accg that is very important so if i change this into the default srgb and say accept now i just need to restart the render gets again converted correctly yeah, i could do that also manually here so if i pick up here srgb that's what we get if i go back here into aces as you would do accept and we pick up now the accg here we get a correct output so to avoid these changes every time you can just pick up a scene linear and that would be whatever you pick up and decide here it automatically will convert that colors to the proper one except that you need to restart the render and you have them let me just return this back to aces cg accept and restart so now when we converted these colors to our color space and not srgb d65 that would be output put to our color output but we also want to have absorption output so we will do reverse transformation here we will use log multiply that with minus one and we will get here on the end our uh, absorption as we had before and this absorption is what will go directly into the first shader as absorption color. So this value that we have after mix is a value that scales our gradient and amount of melanin to something that we could use later, maybe in a texturing from zero to one to something that in a corner here we could have black hair and here white hair. If I put this to one, you will see that now our melanin amount would 
need to go and be bigger than one so we are just scaling this down to something that if i do here 20 or maybe 30 you'll just see that that is just scaling down 15 optimal you don't need to go more than that here we have a scene uh, where we will briefly look how our melanin node performs under different light scenarios at the top here we have a fur ball right now we see that uh, as a proxy if you look at the render we have lots of curves there we have material library where we have uh, our fur material inside we have some light setup here and camera and some render settings let's turn on the render if I go into our fur melanie node, this is a sunny light rig. If I uh, start changing my values here, you could see how that is performing, going into the dark, dark hair. If I pull this to the completely red, it becomes a little bit more red. Right here. Or completely white. Or maybe just a little bit of melanin and a little bit less red. This is one light rig. If I move to another frame, it's set up to load another light rig. You can just go and see how that looks inside the forest. Some overcast indoor under the bridge, in the shadow, overcast on the lake, sunny one, grass, mountains, also lake, sunny, Change a little bit of colors. And so on. 